Good morning everybody, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today uh, I'm out on my Farron OS Linux system again and I thought today we would take a look at CentOS 8. Uh, if you go out to the website here, uh, centos.org, you can see that uh, the project is enumerated out here. Um, you've got a link for CentOS Linux for the stream. You've got the download link so you can download um, the ISO file which I'm going to load into the vert manager. I'm going to click on this link right here and uh, download probably one of these uh, which I've already done and we're going to take a look at a system setup and product review of CentOS 8 Linux based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux or RHEL 8. So come along with me and let's take a look at CentOS 8 from Red Hat. Okay, I'm out on my virtual machine manager or Vertman. Um, and if you don't uh, know what Vertman is or you've never seen virtual manager before in Linux, uh, I've done a video on this previously. So just search through my videos, uh, put in a search Vertman, and you'll find the video that I did on virtual manager. I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this one. All right, so what I've done is I've already downloaded the ISO file. Uh, for CentOS 8 and I'm going to go ahead and set up a virtual machine in Vertman here uh, and uh, go ahead and install that. So let me go ahead and click on create a new virtual machine and we're using the QEMU KVM connection. Uh, we're looking at a local install media ISO file so let's go ahead and forward that. We're going to come down and click on the use ISO image uh, we're not going to use CD-ROM or DVD. We're going to click Browse and we're going to go out to the local browse to the location where I have the ISO file downloaded which is the Data Pioneer Downloads folder, ISO folder. Uh, and here it is, CentOS 8.2.2004 x86-64 bootable ISO and let's click the, on that and click Open. And then that has it loaded in here now, so let's go ahead and forward on that. Uh, for memory, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing 4,096 megabytes or 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, I can increase the number of CPUs if I want, but I'm just going to leave it at 1. Uh, let's click forward here. Uh, I'm going to create a disk image for the virtual machine. I'm going to give it 20 gigs. That's fine. I could increase or decrease that if I like. Let's click forward. And then uh, I want to give this a name. I'm going to call it uh, CentOS or CentOS underscore 8. And we don't need to do any customization here. Let's click Finish. And uh, it's going to go out and do its thing here and bring it up. I'm going to go up and uh, install CentOS. Let's go to full screen and full screen. All right, so it's going to go through the uh, process here of loading up, and then we're going to get to the uh, Anaconda um, installer, which is what CentOS uses, which is the Community Enterprise Linux OS, if you're wondering what CENTOS stands for, based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux or RHEL 8. Uh, so it's coming up now and should be getting to that uh, Anaconda screen here momentarily for the uh, configuration and here we go uh, welcome to CentOS uh, Linux 8 and we're on the English language here English United States I want to click continue alright and so the first thing we want to do here when we get to this uh, installer screen is we want to click on network and host name and go out since we are disconnected we'll need to be connected when we install this so I'm going to go ahead and click on that box and get connected. DHCP will give me an IP address. I have an IP address of 192.168.1.122.122. Or .122. Uh, we are connected. And so I'm going to go ahead and click Done. 
and then it's going to come up and find the installation source for me uh, here momentarily and it should load and uh, there we go alright so for software selection I'm going to click on that and we're just going to do the basic workstation I'm not going to do anything fancy for this uh, particular video so I want to click workstation I'm not going to worry about any of this over here for now uh, we just want to do a basic install of CentOS 8 Linux so let's click done here and uh, I loaded that up so let's come up to the installation destination and click that and then let me unselect and reselect the uh, ATA hard disk of 20 gigs click done and that should load that in and it does so we're now we're ready to install so let's begin the installation and while it's installing let me go ahead and click the root password put in the root password here and repeat that and click done and now I'm going to create a user for CentOS 8 and so this is very important so be careful when you do this I'm going to click user creation I'm going to put in my name and the username of course data pioneer and then make sure that you check this box right here make this user administrator if you don't do that then you're going to have problems with sudo or sudo privileges you're going to have to uh, manually add uh, your user to the uh, wheel group in CentOS 8 or the admin group um, and you so let's go ahead and check that so we don't have to do that so let's go ahead and put in a password for the user alright they should match let's click done and they do and so this thing is off and rolling and I'm gonna go ahead and let it uh, continue I will stop the video uh, here momentarily and we'll come back when it's completed okay I'm back and we are at the point now where we can reboot the system uh, it did uh, complete its process it took about oh, 12 to 15 minutes somewhere along in there not too bad uh, it has to install the 1385 uh, RPMs that you saw earlier and then uh, configure the uh, kernel and do some other things so it does take a little while this is in um, installed rather in vert manager it's not on bare metal although I do have uh, CentOS 8 installed on bare metal but I'm doing this video um, in vert manager and so let's go ahead and reboot the system here and it shouldn't take very long we'll come up and get in and um, and we'll look around uh, sent OS 8 take a look at it hopefully we'll get to full screen as well um, in the login process I prefer Virt Manager over Virtual VirtualBox or VMware. Actually, it's it's a nice product in Linux. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out. I've got a video, like I said, on Virt Manager. All right. So the first thing I need to do is uh, there is a license associated with this. It's free for CentOS. However, if you get uh, RHEL 8 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you will have to pay for that, but you don't have to here. So let's go ahead. We do have to agree to the license, and so let's go ahead and click on that. And it says CentOS 8 Linux uh, EULA. Um, CentOS 8 Linux comes with no guarantees or warranties of any sort, either written or implied. Uh, and the distribution is released under the uh, GPL version 2 individual package. Uh, and so let's go ahead and accept that, the terms of that license, and click Done and uh, let the process complete here alright so now we've done that let's go ahead and click uh, finish configuration and let it boot up alright so we are at the login screen and I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, the enter key type in my password and let's sign in get to the desktop this is a GNOME 3 desktop uh, that CentOS 8 is built on and here we are 
So we are at the desktop now in CentOS 8. Okay, so we still have some uh, additional items to complete here. So let's click Next. We're at the uh, initial screen. We're on English. So let's click Next. Uh, for typing, we're at the English keyboard. That's fine. Let's click Next. Privacy, I'm going to leave it turned on. Let's click Next. Connecting to online accounts, I'm not going to mess with that right now. Let's click Skip. And we're ready to go, so let's start using CentOS Linux. Click that button right there. And then there's a Getting Started screen that pops up for common tasks that you can do. Uh, launching applications, switching tabs and or tasks. Uh, using Windows and workspaces and then there's some things down here that are enumerated that you can take a look at. Uh, there is a GNOME help uh, functionality link here as well. So you can do things like browse the web, connect to online accounts, get online, change the date, time, and time zone, use the system search, launch applications, change wallpaper, use Windows and workspaces, and switch tasks. I'm not going to do that right now. I just want to get to the desktop so we can take a look at what we have. So let's click the X here and we're back on the desktop. Okay, so I'm back out on the desktop and uh, let's go ahead and see what we have here in CentOS 8. Um, keep in mind as we're looking at CentOS, um, CentOS is not one of your bells and whistles Linux distros, okay, because it's, it's based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which means that it's a community enterprise uh, Linux distro based on RHEL 8, uh, and it's community uh, supported. It's not uh, supported by uh, Red Hat, and so it is an enterprise Linux distro, and therefore it's not going to have a lot of the bells and whistles that you find in, you know, a lot of your other distributions of Linux, such as, you know, Farron or um, Debian or even Arch Linux for that matter. Uh, it just is not uh, the bells and whistles kind of Linux distro. So let's see what we do have. Um, here we have the activities and this is the way that uh, you can click on this and it'll open up the various things. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but um, you can uh, access those things plus you can get to your desktops and the, there are uh, workspaces that are uh, on, created on the fly and um, and so that's the activities uh, button here all right across the top we do have a calendar if you click on it you can see that we have a calendar here uh, it's Tuesday October the 6th and there are no notifications there um, if you go on over this is area here that uh, has our uh, wired connection or our Ethernet or network connectivity you can select it and you can uh, you know if you have uh, wireless you can get that through this as well you can turn off the the distro here this is on a um, you know vertman so this is a VM of CentOS this isn't uh, bare metal alright and you can control the volume uh, here and uh, do other things so you can power down you can do a restart uh, and that kind of thing. I'm not going to restart it, but uh, you can do that from here as well. Now, as for the desktop, uh, you can right-click on the desktop and go to Display Settings and uh, click on that, and you can see that I am at 1920 by 1080, 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Uh, it is in landscape mode orientation. Uh, we are at 100% scale, but I can go up to 200% scale if I wanted to. 60% uh, refresh rate. You can turn the night light on and off. Here you can control things like your keyboard, various functionality here. Uh, if you have a uh, mouse and a touchpad, I have a mouse, but I do not have a touchpad here because I'm on a desktop tower PC. But I can control the mouse speed here uh, by clicking that back and forth. Um, and then uh, natural scrolling, I can turn that on or off. Uh, I have a primary button on the mouse being left or right, and right now it's the left. Printers, I don't have any setup in here. It did not auto detect my printer, and that's uh, probably normal for an enterprise Linux distribution because uh, they expect you to go in and set your own printers up, so it's not going to detect it. And the fact that it's a, um, a virtual machine uh, also 
uh, is another reason why that was not auto detected. Uh, I do believe in my um, CentOS uh, bare metal installa installation, it did detect my printer. So uh, I probably should back up and say that uh, just because it's an enterprise Linux distro, that does not mean that's why it doesn't detect the printer here. I think it's more likely because it's a virtual machine. Uh, this is your removable media. Uh, you know, if you CD audio or DVD video or music player, or photos or software, you know, what do you what do you want to do when it detects that? When you insert, um, you know, a USB stick, for instance, in your um, in your distro here, what do you want it to do? All right, so you can click on the other media to do that. It does have Thunderbolt and the Wacom tablet if you have that, and you can control your color here as well. All right, so let's, let's go back out to activities. Well, first of all, let's go back here and uh, right-click and change background. You can change your background this way, and if you click on background, it does take you out to other uh, possibilities that you have. And you'll notice not a lot of bells and whistles again. Sun so OS 8 uh, gives you some changes that you can make. For instance, I'll go ahead and select that one. However, I can uh, ask it to take a picture uh, that I have in my pictures directory and uh, bring that in as a wallpaper. That's not beyond the possibility here, but I'm just going to go ahead and select one that's available, which I'm going to change the blue to a red and select that. And as you can see, it changed the, the background to the red. I actually prefer the red over the blue, but that's, you know, each person's own choice. Now well, let's see what else we have. If I go up to activities and click on that, we do have the Firefox web browser. If I click on that, out of the box, Firefox comes with um, CentOS 8, and this is CentOS 8 workstation, not CentOS 8 server. Um, you notice in the Anaconda installer, you, we did have the option to install um, the CentOS 8 server and server with GUI. Uh, in fact, that's what I have installed on Bare Metal is a CentOS 8 server with GUI. Here I have the desktop installed. So this is the uh, uh, Firefox web browser, and if we go out to here, and uh, let me see if I can bring up my website. There we go, and I'll bring up my website here. It's a Data Pioneer a DP network. If I go over here to the pancake and or hamburger, I guess it's called, and go down to help and about Firefox, uh, you can see that we are running 78.2 uh, extended support release ESR, 64-bit, so that's great for Red Hat 1.0. All right, so let me go ahead and close that, and let's go ahead and close the browser, and close tabs. All right, so we've got that closed. Let's go on down. Next, we have Evolution Mail, and I don't know if you uh, are an Evolution Mail client uh, prefer or if you have another client you use. I use the web base interface. I don't use a client. But you can set this up for any uh, POP3 or IMAP4 uh, email service that you might have uh, going out there on one of your online accounts. You can set that up very easily. I'm not going to do that here, but it's available to you. Evolution Mail is liked by a lot of people. All right, so we have the Rhythm Box, which is your music player and uh, we have the files here, which is the uh, GNOME 3 uh, file manager. And so you can see we have desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, uh, public templates, and videos. If I come back over here and um, on the desktop, let me close this for a moment. If I come back and um, actually let me come back up here, click on that, and let's click on uh, screenshot. All right, so here's screenshot. If I click on that, it's going to bring this up, which is my screenshot application or package. I'll bring this over, and I'm going to give it three seconds of delay, and I'm going to tell it to capture the whole screen. I'm going to take a screenshot here, and I'm going to put that in my pictures folder. All right, and so here we go. Um, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to save it. And so now if I reopen the file manager, um, you can see that if I go to the pictures folder, there we are, or directory, there is the pictures. And if I open it with the image viewer, here's another application that's installed by default or out of the box in CentOS 8, which is Picture Viewer. It's a very nice um, 
application, I think, because it provides a lot of information over here on properties. You know, you, the size of the screenshot the or the picture, the type of picture it is, the file size, uh, what folder it's in. And it even gives you a lot of metadata information like aperture, exposure, focal length, uh, the ISO, um, the metering camera, the date and time of, that the picture was taken. So if it's an actual photograph, uh, this metadata is captured by your camera and then it's picked up when you save the picture in the camera or other device that you use to take photographs. Not necessarily on the web. You may not get that on the web unless that's already been done for you. So let me go ahead and close that and let's go ahead and close File Manager. Come back to Activities and let's come down Next thing you want to look at is software. So this is the Software Center. It's not as robust as some of the others I've seen in other distros. Uh, but under here you've got audio and video. So you've got Brazero, Cheese, Rhythmbox. If I come back over here uh, to Graphics and Photography, we do have Inkscape, uh, GNU Image uh, Manipulation Program, LibreOffice Draw, Xane, and Photos. If I come back over for communications and news, we have more here, which is HexChat, Firefox, uh, Pigeon Internet, Wireshark, Java, Remote Viewer, and Remote Desktop. And then here up above here are the featured communications and news uh, picks by the editor. Um, let's come back over. Add-ons. Here we have the G Streamer Multimedia. Uh, let's go up to Productivity. Here we have Evolution Mail, LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Draw, LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Base, and LibreOffice uh, Impress. So yes, the entire LibreOffice suite here is uh, installed out of the box in CentOS 8. Um, and then finally, Developer Tools, you do have uh, CMake GUI, DevHelp, and Idle 3, which is a uh, Python uh, Idle uh, platform. All right, so let's go back to um, graphics and photography and I want to install the GNU image manipulation program. So if I click on that it opens this up. Here we are. Tells us a little bit about GIMP and what it's about. Gives us a link to the website if we want to check out the website and see more about it. Um, I'm a big fan of, of uh, GNU image manipulation program. Uh, I'm becoming a better fan of Krita right now but uh, I don't think Krita is available out of the box here in CentOS 8. So I'm going to go ahead and install GNU Image Manipulation Program, otherwise known as GIMP, and I don't know what version we're going to get. So let me go ahead and click Install. And so it goes ahead and goes through the process of installing. It takes a few seconds to do that. It doesn't, should, usually doesn't take very long. And this is a virtual machine, so it may take a little longer. Not quite sure. So we'll see what happens here. And so we have to be patient. And here we are at 97%. And it is installed. So if I want to go ahead and launch it, I can do it right from here. So if I'll go ahead and click Launch. It's a version 2.8. I think the latest version is 2.10. So uh, this is one of the more stable versions, probably. And if I click on Windows and click on single window mode it comes up to single window mode if I go to full screen there we go if I bring up that image that I captured onto the desktop so if I open here and select that image and click open there we go alright so if you've never used GIMP it's a great tool it's kinda of like a Photoshop in a lot of ways not quite uh, as robust not quite the capability of Photoshop but it, uh, it comes darn close to it. All right, so uh, check that out. If you haven't used GIMP before, check out GIMP. Uh, 2.10 is what you're probably going to find. The, the issue with CentOS, just like Red Hat, is that CentOS is based on the Red Hat core, and so it uses the repos available for Red Hat. And the repos are behind the times a little bit because Red Hat prefers to uh, lag behind and not go bleeding edge. And the reason for that is they want to make sure that it's stable and that users don't have issues with it. I'm okay with that um, because I, I have another application or distribution rather of, of Linux that I use is more bleeding edge called Farron OS and uh, Farron Linux OS. And so I'm okay with that. So let me go ahead and close this. All right, and let's see what else we have. Um, here's some help. So if I click on that, 
Uh, it gives us a little bit of help functionality here for GNOME. Uh, your desktop, files, folders, and search, universal access, networking, web, and mail, uh, or email, user and system settings, tips and tricks, uh, sound, videos, and pictures, hardware and drivers, and get more help. So you can click on any of these, and that will take you out to uh, various information, uh, online manual, and that kind of thing, or even links to the web for additional help. Come back to activities. If I go here to the terminal, brings up the terminal. Let me bump that up a little bit. All right, and so let me do a uname A, and uh, we can see that we're running Linux. The uh, machine is called localhost.localdomain, and that is the fully qualified domain name for this machine. We are using the uh, 4.18.0-193 dot nineteen dot one dot el eight underscore two dot x eighty six underscore sixty four kernel all right that kernel is an older kernel because it's a more stable kernel uh, I think we're up to five dot ten or even higher now so this is an older kernel it doesn't mean it's no good it just means that it's uh, more stable it's been tried and true and um, it's going to be a stable and very responsive kernel it's going to detect your hardware and that kind of thing. All right, so this is Monday, September 14th, uh, 1437, uh, UTC uh, on 2020. All right, and so let's uh, let me see where I'm at in the system here. I'm a data home data pioneer, and if I run a free to see how much free memory I have right now, I can see that I've got about four gigs, which is what I set up in the system, if you recall, and it looks like I'm using about one. 0.3 gigs of, of available memory, so it's not too bad. Um, I'm not using any swap at all, which is good. All right, so let me do a df um, kh, and let's take a look at that. And here's the structure of the file system uh, that we have right now. And so you can see that um, this is a um, let's see, dev mapper, which is um, 17 gigs in size. It was a 20 gig uh, VDI space that I gave it, but some of it's being used by the system, so there's only 13 gigs available. I've actually used 29% of it so far, so um, selecting 20 gigs of um, virtual hard drive space was a good plan. All right. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, let me clear the screen and let me uh, do a sudo. Um, and let me update the system. So now let me talk about that for a moment. Now, uh, this is, I'll let this be a part of the video. Um, you may, if you're using Ubuntu or Debian Linux, uh, you're f probably familiar with the aptitude package manager. So it would run a sudo apt update to do that here. But this is CentOS 8, and that's based on Red Hat. And Red Hat does not use aptitude. It uses something called yum, Y-U-M. Okay, so you do a yum update. However, uh, as of Red Hat 8, and so as of CentOS 8, YUM has been deprecated. That doesn't mean that it won't work, but it just means it's been deprecated. It's been updated to another one called DNF. Now, YUM stands for Yellow Dog Update Manager, and that's based on the Yellow Dog Linux, which I don't believe exists anymore. Uh, but it's been deprecated, and so now it's been replaced by DNF, and DNF is referred to as the dandified yum and that's why the dnf so it stands for dandified um, and so sudo dnf uh, update would be the command that we would run and i'll go ahead and put in my password and it's checking to see uh, the uh, last update that was done it says that the dependencies were resolved and there's nothing to do so the system is up to date and so I'm, I'm done with that. If I want to install something, uh, then uh, if it, it will require sudo privileges, so I'll do a sudo uh, dnf install and then the package name in order to make that install. So just keep that in mind as you're using um, CentOS 8. All right. So let me go ahead and clear the screen and let's just exit out of here and get out of the terminal. And now the last thing we want to look at here is this area down here called Show Applications. If I click on that, 
it's going to bring up all of the applications. Now these are frequent, so if I click on all button down here, this will bring up all of the installed applications that, that are currently installed out of the box. And so one of them is called Boxes, which is a virtualization platform for CentOS 8. Another is Calculator. Another is Cheese. Uh, Cheese, I believe, is a scanner. Um, then we have Evolution Mail. We have Files. We already looked at that. We have Firefox Web Browser. We looked at that. Here's one that I installed, and so this one did not come out of the box. But it was available in the repository. And so that's the GNU image manipulation program. Pigeon Internet Messenger, which is an Internet Messenger program. Rhythm Box, again. Here's the Settings link. If I click on that, um, it takes us out to all of the settings that we already really talked about here. Uh, but we have Wi-Fi, we have Bluetooth, we have search capability, region and language, uh, universal access, online accounts. We have a bunch of those, and I'm not big, big on uh, online accounts uh, in a Linux distro. We have some privacy settings we have here. We have sharing capability. Uh, here is the computer name, and we can sh share files on this computer with other Linux uh, computers and Windows computers if we use Samba. We have sound, we have power, we have network, we have devices, uh, and then we have other things uh, down below that, which is the final, which is network. Okay, So we are connected right now, and VPN is not set up. I have no network proxy right now running. Okay, So let's turn that off. And um, there's one more thing I think I wanted to show you in the terminal. So let me get back into the terminal. And that is, if I want to look at um, the repo list, uh, the available repositories in CentOS, there's only three main repositories. So if I do a sudo dnf uh, repo list, and it's going to bring up, I need to put in my password, it's going to bring up the repository list. So the repository list, it's two columns, the repo ID and the repo name. So one of them is called AppStream, and this is the application stream uh, available through Red Hat, uh, which has been cloned by CentOS. And the repo name is called the CentOS 8 AppStream. The base OS, and this is the repo for all of the base pro packages in Cento CentOS. I call it CentOS and CentOS, same thing. And it's called the CentOS 8 base, okay, repository. And then there's one called Extras, and that's the CentOS 8 Extras repository. Now, you can install additional repositories in CentOS 8, just like you can any other Linux distro. Uh, there is one that a lot of people grab, and that's called the EPL, E-P-E-L, and that stands for Extra Package Packages for Enterprise Linux. Um, if you do install the EPL, it is uh, not directly supported by Red Hat, uh, and it's kind of indirectly supported actually by CentOS. You can install it, they won't let, prevent you from doing it, but you're not going to get a lot of support from it, but that gives you more or closer to the bleeding edge, if you will. For instance, HTOP, if I tried to install HTOP right now, so let me do a sudo dnf search uh, for HTOP. I don't think it's going to find it. No, see, no matches were found. That's because HTOP is not either in the app stream the base OS or the extras repository. Uh, it will be found in the Apple repository, however, and I can install it. So if I do, uh, you know, add the REPL, uh, in the Apple rather, repository for RHEL or CentOS 8, I will be able to get that. All right, so let me go ahead and exit out of this. And um, that concludes the, uh, the quick review here of uh, CentOS 8. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and uh, put those in the comments down below. Please, uh, if you like this video, if you thought you, it was helpful to you, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button and hit the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. And so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.